Hey guys, earlier today we were checking out the Quest 2 from Ohm and this is the Cruise 2. So it's a step through, doesn't have suspension, but it shares a lot in common with the Quest 2. And I'm a big fan of this thing. It's a very capable bike, very comfortable. And it's $600 less, about three pounds less heavy. And for a cruiser bike where your body weight is a little bit more back and upright, you can see these kind of swept back gull wing handlebars. This actually makes more of a difference. Suspension fork is nice, but I know a lot of people who they'll have a bike with it and they'll lock it out because they don't want the bobbing and they don't end up using it. So if you're someone who's just cruising around neighborhoods like this and you want something that's comfortable, a nice upright relaxed geometry, I, I wouldn't discount this bike. It's actually pretty neat the way this Set up and as usual with ohm there's a lot of upgraded hardware that's really worth pointing out so before we begin there's three frame sizes in this so in addition to being super approachable step through three frame sizes you can really dial in the fit and i think even the crank arms change length and some of the other hardware to really give you that right size feel it comes in two frame colors. So there's this pearl, sort of a white color or slate. And in both cases, we've got these beautiful reflective sidewalls on the tires. So it's gonna help you stand out and be a little bit safer. And this awesome 65 Lux headlight mounted perfectly up high right there, just below the handlebar. So it's gonna point where you steer. You're gonna be a little bit more visible to cars. You got that light higher up. And instead of having it down here, a lot of times on the arch of the fork or just this area, maybe even on the fender I've seen before, sometimes they can get blocked by the tire or the fender itself. So this is not gonna get blocked. I think it's just perfect. I guess the wires could get in the way a little bit. Such a bright headlight. Um, I'm, I'm really impressed with that. And then the rear light, check this out, two LEDs and they're out towards the edge and there are these sort of side windows as well. So this bike is using a slightly different drive system than the Quest 2. So this is the E7000 motor versus the E8. So this one offers 70 Newton meters of torque instead of 85. It's gonna be a little bit quieter, a little bit more subtle, still very high torque rating, very capable. It's a lightweight, motor and it's going to be a little bit more efficient they have the same battery capacity so this is a 504 watt hour lithium ion battery 36 volt 14 amp hour so again the same battery if you had both of these bikes you could you could swap the batteries and maybe one's drained all the way and you, you just borrow it to your friend or your family member or if someone's going on a really big adventure and you've got some of the accessories maybe some bags or a, a, a kind of a trunk bag you could take a second battery to double your range i love that the family of ohm products do share a lot of hardware and components that way and it's nice when you when you get bikes from kind of the same company the chargers are interchangeable and stuff just makes it a little bit easier note that ohm also has like a quest to suv with a 630 watt hour battery and then you're kind of getting into different uh, form factors and stuff but for what it's worth let's get back to this bike 27.5 by two inch tires. These are Schwabi Big Ben. They have K Guard 3, so they're puncture resistant, which is nice. You know, you don't have to worry as much about getting flat tires. Awesome rims with reinforcement eyelets. That's those little silver circles. That way the rim won't crack as easily, gives you a higher weight rating, and they're just easier to adjust without damaging the rims. Black spokes, black hub, 15 millimeter through axle right here. Standard hub spacing, 100 millimeters, but that 15 millimeter through axle, it's just a lot sturdier. It's kind of a beefy part that usually you'd see on mountain bikes. So it's kind of neat to see it on a cruiser. Quick release up front, which makes it easier to do some service or maybe just haul the bike if you have to stick this in the back of your trunk or something. We do have quick release at the back as well. And I, I love that 142 millimeter hub spacing in the rear. We'll talk about these fenders real quick. You might've noticed they're extra thick. It's double walled tubular aluminum alloy and they give you excellent coverage. It comes down a lot farther than some of the other fenders I see out there. And they're just, they're very sturdy, they're quiet. And it's this clean kind of refined finish that I appreciate. I love the rack as well. This is rack time compatible. So they have this 
huge rack that kind of clicks on as well as a sort of a basket a little bit nicer than the the egg crate you might have used in college or something and then they have a trunk bag that's sort of canvas and all of those will just click right on and click off super easily i love that this rack is rated up to 25 kilograms which is 55 pounds that's very high capacity standard gauge tubing for any of the aftermarket panniers you might be looking at. And we have a bungee loop at the bottom so you can get really simple with a bungee cord if you want. I love how the rack surrounds and kind of protects that rear light. It does interface directly with the fender and there's extra supports going through the fender directly to the frame. So it's very well done and another like kind of premium part. Down here at the drivetrain, we've got 170 millimeter crank arm for the smaller frame size and the medium. And I think at the large, it's 175 millimeters. So you get a longer uh, crank for a, a more consistent cadence for a taller individual. These pedals, aluminum alloy from Welgo, actually these might be the magnesium ones. Yeah, MG. They are even lighter, very sturdy. We've got these fixed pins, almost overkill for a cruiser, but on a wet day like today where those fenders are coming in handy and maybe you've got mud or grass on your feet, you don't want to slip off and these are just going to, they're going to do great. I also think they look really nice. 42 tooth steel chain ring, narrow wide, so every other tooth is wide and that slots perfectly into the chain because the openings are narrow wide, narrow wide. So it's, it's just something, again, you usually see on nicer bikes maybe mountain bikes so the chain doesn't hop off if you go off-road. And we have this aluminum alloy guard. So if your pant leg is getting close to that chain ring and the chain, it won't touch, it won't get as, as greasy or snag as easily. And because this is a thicker guard, it doubles as a bash guard. So if you maybe hit a, a log or a curb, it's gonna take the, the brunt of that force on the guard instead of the, the motor housing or the chain ring itself. Back here we have a Shimano Dior derailleur with a one-way clutch so we can put it in the off position down and it makes this a little bit looser, easier to take the wheel off and do some servicing. But then once you get going, you put it in the on position, it tightens it up and that way the chain won't be bouncing all around. I didn't see a slap guard on uh, the frame here on the chainstay, but given that this is a nicer derailleur, I, you know, and again, a cruiser, maybe it's not a big deal. I would consider using a piece of clear box tape or something. There are neoprene slap guards, but with such a nice paint finish, um, it's, a, it's a minor thing, just wanna call out. And then I think this is 11 to 36 tooth, 10 speed cassette, Shimano components, really nice to see. And I love the, the shifters up here. This is one of my favorites. So we have a two way high trigger, so you can push it or pull it. And then we have a multi-shift low lever. The reason I mentioned that two-way trigger is because a lot of times I'm using my pointer finger and my middle finger on the brakes and I'm using my thumb to shift. So I like having that option right there. This nice swept back handlebar gives you the relaxed body position. And this is an optional adjustable angle stem, optional. So between that and the suspension seat post, you can really dial this thing in. You are gonna pay a bit more, especially for Connect, but this is one of the nicer suspension posts out there on the market. It's adjustable. They have different springs for different weights and stuff. 30.9 millimeter seat post diameter if you wanna get a cheaper suspension post or you could just stick with the the rigid post and the benefit of that is the the saddle height is going to be a lot lower this adds about three inches of height so if you're someone who's got a shorter inseam and you're looking for that approachable frame now all of a sudden your saddle is really high it can kind of defeat the purpose so it's nice that you, you've got a few different options here and i just want to call that out to help you choose ergon locking ergonomic grips very comfortable comfortable saddle back here and then the brake levers they are adjustable reach so if you have smaller hands you get the smaller frame size you can bring these in a little bit there's like a set screw in here to kind of adjust it and if you're a taller rider you can set them out a little bit farther as well it's a good setup all around 180 millimeter rotors front and rear which is a good size but one thing that's extra special about this setup is that they're quad piston calipers so a caliper they they kind of come in and grab that rotor so one two so that's like dual piston this one has quad piston so there's two on each side it gives you more surface area a little bit more consistency and power for braking and the 180 millimeter rotor sizes i'd say perfect for a bike like this. Again, almost overkill. 160 would probably be okay, but the 180 gives you a bit more cooling and a bit more mechanical advantage over 
the, the, these are medium sized wheels, but with a little bit heavier tires because of the puncture protection. If you get too big on those rotors and then you park at a bike rack, the rotor can get bent. This is about 50 pounds, okay, at 49.7 or something like that, and about 53 over there. So again, between the motor differences and the suspension fork, those are some of your big trade-offs. And for me, that's a really lightweight for a bike that is just fully equipped, right? It's feature complete. You got the lights, you got the fenders, you got the rack, everything looks great. It matches, it works well together. Oh, and I don't wanna forget, we do have two bottle cage mounting points. So you could put a bottle here and maybe a folding lock right here or vice versa. I love it when companies put extra time and thought into accessories like they've done here. Also, you'll notice that seat tube is flared, so it's extra sturdy and we've got some additional metal right here and almost a big gusset going down the frame. You can just tell that they've put a lot of extra energy into such a custom frame and to have it in two colors and three frame sizes, I'm really impressed. This is the charge port for charging the battery when it's on the bike, and they've kind of angled it a little bit too. So when you plug in, that, that wire won't be quite as directly in the path of the crank arm, and it is farther back. A lot of times I'm kind of wishing that that would be up high on the right side of the frame, but you can see the power button for the bike is positioned right there, and we have the locking uh, core for unlocking the battery on the left side. So I think they're doing the best job they can. It's got a little rubber cover. You can plug that in, charge, charge the battery, when it's on the bike and they do have a fairly robust it's like a four amp pretty fast charger that's again cross compatible with some of the other models weighs about two pounds a little bit bigger and there's like a dongle so if you are going to charge the battery off the bike you need to keep that dongle try not to lose it it's this chunky thing um, the benefits of charging the battery off the bike would be you can keep it in a cool dry location sometimes people are storing their bikes in a garage and if it gets extremely hot those lithium ion cells can get worn out a little bit faster they're not going to get as many full charge cycles and extreme cold will temporarily stunt your range you might not get the full um, capacity you might not make it to work if you're using this to commute so taking the battery off is a is a good consideration. I just um, kind of wish you didn't have to use the dongle. I also would probably turn the wheel like this if I was getting ready to take the, the battery off. You can slide this plastic cover open like that we just did and then pull it off. This does not lock to the frame. Anyone could take it off. So that's a little bit of a question mark, but they do have this nice rubber going around the edges to keep it watertight. And this is a fairly generic part. So it's the same one used over there on the Quest 2. If you lost it or needed a replacement, I think it'd be a bit more affordable. And it is a bit lighter weight than like a color matched metal cover. I can't fault them too much. And now we'll go ahead and just take that off. Pop the can, pop the battery out. And there we go, there's the battery. Oh, it does have that charge level indicator built in mm -hmm. as well. So you can see how full it is if you've got it off the bike. This is where you would use that dongle to plug in directly if you were charging it in your house or something. Michael, we can put the, the cover back on the frame too if we wanted, mm -hmm. even without the battery. Yeah, if you're transporting the bike on your vehicle for a long, um, long trip, and yeah. um, then you can take the battery out and uh, put the weather car guard back on. That's great, keeps it dry and clean. Do you sell replacements of those if someone loses it? Yes, yep, we have replacements. It hasn't happened yet, but uh, we have replacements. Fantastic, thanks. Okay guys, so when it's time to, to boot the bike up, the battery's charged and mounted, we'll press this silver button down here. The display comes to life pretty quickly. Grayscale, pretty easy to read. Shimano has a smaller one that's over here, but I like how this is easy to reach and it's fairly simple. There are five little bars and each one represents a 20% step. Not as precise as like a one percentage would be, or maybe 10 bars would be nicer. But on the other hand, it has a range estimator. so. The battery capacity is less relevant here. You can just, you know, go up to the first level of assist by pressing the up arrow and it says, okay, 35 kilometers. And keep in mind, the battery on this is not fully charged at all. So you'd be getting way better range uh, in the field. Go up to the second level, 26 kilometers. The third level, 17 kilometers. So you can see it really drops off when you get to that higher level, those 70 Newton meters of torque. I really love the range estimators on these. By the way, this is kind of backlit, so you're gonna be able to see it at night. 
which is nice. A little button in the middle will go from range to distance. So it says trip distance zero, odometer zero. This is a brand new bike. Wow, how cool is that? And then this button at the bottom, that activates or deactivates the lights. So you can turn them off or turn them on. I tend to ride with the lights on. Again, 65 lux up here. It's, it's just really not taking that much battery and you're adding to the overall safety. But there are times where it's like a moonlight ride with your friends and maybe you just feel like you don't need the light or it's, it's bothering you or something. Over here on the right, we've got a bell. This is a class one electric bike, meaning 20 mile per hour top speed. It's permissible on the most trails and paths. Again, it's a cruiser, but this is fairly trail capable with the through axles and stuff. Interestingly, it sounds like Ohm is going to have a class three version of this some point in the future. So that would be like 28 mile per hour top speed. And if you're someone who's commuting and maybe just like the speed factor, that's gonna be, I'm pretty excited about that. That's sort of new from Shimano. Their drive systems haven't always supported that. There are very few cruisers where I'm like excited to hear that there's gonna be a higher speed version. And this one I am, and it just comes back to how the frame is so well reinforced and that the fenders are so nice. Everything just feels a little bit overbuilt and you, you really want that when you're going faster. So, and that one's gonna of course cost a little bit more, but worth mentioning. So I'm gonna hop on the bike here. Easy, easy step over. I'm in the lowest level of assist and a low gear, just start pedaling. Feels really natural. I mean, Shimano is very quiet and smooth. That motor's measuring the rear wheel speed, pedal cadence, and pedal torque. It doesn't have shift detection like Bosch, but that's a software-driven thing, and in my experience, it's, it's a little bit imperfect. It's sort of a nice to have, but then again, those motors weigh a bit more, and they tend to be louder. So this is, it's very efficient, it's clean, compact. Those are some of the highlights, if I were to describe them. A couple times, by the way, I have heard rocks sort of going through and tinking on the fender a little bit. You can hear that just being metal. Those fenders are so good. It's just very quiet and smooth. Now I'm up in a higher level of assist. Kind of do no hands. Shift up to some of those higher gears. Super easy to get to that top speed. Very tight, does feel nimble, pretty sporty for a cruiser, but noticeably upright because of the handlebars and everything. And this is the size medium out of three frame sizes. Beautiful. Pretty sporty cruiser. Guys, I think that's about it. That is the Ohm Cruise 2 for the full written review on this. Check out electricbikereview.com. Got all the specs and everything recorded. Big thanks to Michael. It's nice to see these bikes back to back. And I love just how there's some cross compatibility, the batteries, the chargers and stuff, and how you've created a cruiser that's a lot sportier, you know, and almost, almost like trail capable of, you know, a trail like this. Totally, yeah. yeah we design it for pavement and, and also for gravel. It's really nice, especially here in BC, a day like today where it's a little wet. The fenders, I love how long those are. You've done a really good job with the parts. Um, again, about 4,000 USD on this. Yep. Um, love you guys. Ride safe. We'll see you next time.